Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a good number of times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, quite a few different styles, but I would say that it's fair to call this brewery one of the more traditional Scottish craft breweries, in fact. And it's always nice to try the new beers that they're releasing when I get back to the motherland and when I see them, of course. But the one that we're going to have a look at today is a beer that I've been wanting to try for a little while. It's a style that I very much enjoy, so hopefully it's another good one. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So, um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head down to a little place called Bigger in the Scottish Border region, and that happens to be home to Scotland's very first microbrewery. So we're going to have a look at another beer from Broughton Ales. This one is called The Wee Jock, it comes in at 4.4% ABV, it's a Scotch Ale, wee heavy, or in the local terms, it's an 80 shilling. So uh, yeah, curious to see what this has in store for us, because the old jock is one of my kind of favourite go-to, I guess we could say, Scottish craft beers. So uh, yeah, we'll just need to see how we get on with this one then. This review is also a little bit special, because this one will air on my 30th birthday, and you know, what better way to celebrate your 30th birthday than with a Scotch Ale? So yeah, not the, the most highly alcoholic one, but that's another story. But yeah, definitely cool to return to the brewery where the whole Scottish craft beer scene started and to have a go at one of my favourite styles. So yeah, happy birthday to me, I guess. I'm getting old. But uh, yeah, let's crack on with this one then and just see how we go. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brought and Ales before, and you will hopefully see some more reviews added to that list at some point in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity, but quite regularly at the moment, because I'm back in the motherland of Scotland for a little while. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Broughton Brewery then. So Broughton Brewery, Broughton Ales, was founded back in 1979 by David Younger and James Collins in a former abattoir in the small village of Bigger down in the Scottish Borders region. And Broughton Ales, as I've mentioned to you already, is regarded as the very first Scottish microbrewery. So Collins and Younger released their first beer, the Green Mantle Ale, to great success. And the brewery became really well known throughout Scotland on the back of this. And the beer was actually so popular that the locals soon began to refer to the brewery as the Green Mantle Brewery. And it's considered a kind of cult classic, if you like, by the older generation of craft beer lovers in Scotland. My dad uh, used to drink the Green Mantle Ale quite regularly actually. But in 1995 the brewery underwent a change in ownership after going insolvent and it was taken over by Giles Litchfield who introduced the moniker Beers with Character and he released a series of 10 bottled ales that he wanted to you know basically use to increase the exports of the brewery and this began in 1996 and they've been growing quite steadily ever since. This was the beers like you know the Black Douglas, the Merlin Ale, all of these kind of things that they used to do. But fast forward another couple of years then in 2015 the brewery was bought by John Hunt, Steve McCarney and David McGowan who have all held positions in various international drinks companies and they've been increasing the brewery production over the last few years and they've also built a visitor centre at the brewery as well. But uh, recently they have undergone a major rebranding range and they now only have two ranges of beer. So this is the Hoppo and the Jock series. So you saw me review one of the Hoppo beers uh, quite recently, I remember if I remember correctly, and we will need to have a little look at the uh, the other ones actually. But uh, yeah, the Jock ales are quite interesting, and the Old Jock, as I mentioned to you earlier, is one of my favourite or kind of go-to Scottish craft beers, I guess you could say. But as of November 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 25 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and like I said to you, they are the very first Scottish microbrewery, and they used to do a variety of different styles, but these days it's mainly Scotch ales 
and uh, different kinds of IPAs and paleos and things that they do. I do hope that at some point in the future they will kind of, you know, do the historic series or something like that, call it something like that and re-release the Black Douglas and the, the Green Mantle and the Merlin Ale. The Green Mantle, I think, is one they really need to bring back because that was the first uh, Scottish craft beer. So I think it's a real shame that that one in particular has kind of gone out of uh, out of production if you like but you know who knows maybe they will bring it back in the future i think they should but uh yeah that's all i can really tell you about brought and ales for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and have a taste of this one and see how we go. I'll also tell you a little bit about Scotch Ales as well. So um, as you can see, if you go back and look at my old Jock review that I did quite a few years ago, I believe um, that was the very first beer that I reviewed from this brewery, if memory serves me correctly. But you can see, there you go, brought in Scotland. It's a plain black bottle cap on this one, which isn't always the case with the brewery. They actually do have um, special Broughton brew caps but yeah a half litre bottle and I believe I got this one in my local Tesco for about £1.75 or something like that so that's roughly about you know two euros or so so 20 Swedish kroner for those of you watching back over there and I guess somewhere in the region of $2.50 American for you know four and a half percent scotch ale that's nay bad so to tell you a little bit about the scotch ales and wee heavies and the terminology and things like that that goes into these beers. So um, for me, there are two different types of Scotch ale. There are the kind of traditional Scottish ones and there are the American ones. So the American ones for me tend to be a little bit more oily in their brown sugary character. The fruits are a little bit kind of, you know, you know just sweeter and more candied in a sense. And uh, yeah, the, the hoppy character is, is kind of roughly the same in fairness. But when it comes to the Scottish brewed Scotch ales, they've got a little bit more of a kind of toasty, grainy, bready character to them. The brown sugar is a little bit more toasty as well. And you've also got a more kind of dried uh, sort of, yeah, sort of dried kind of fruity character rather than anything else. So for me, that's the main difference between the kind of more traditional and the kind of new world Scotch ales, if you like. But the term wee heavy, as far as I can figure, was, uh, I think it was coined when the Americans took the beer style over to the States. They started calling it the Wee Heavy, and it's kind of spread a little bit in Scotland since then, if um, if I'm not mistaken. But the whole thing with the shilling, basically, the shilling was an old system that was used before the pound was decimalised. So you used, to have loads, you used to have these things. So it's basically drawn with a slash and then a, a dash after it. So uh, back in the day when it came to taxing beer, it was essentially the case that the higher the malt content, the more the alcohol, and thus the higher the tax you pay. So there used to be 30 shilling, 40 shilling, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 shilling beers. Now, what is termed the Scotch Ale today, or the Wee Heavy, tends to be something similar to an 80 or a 90 shilling. You can also get the 160 shilling, probably the most well-known example of that in Scotland would be the 160 shilling from Tracker House Brewery, which is a lovely beer, and I do recommend that you try that. Whereas if you try the Old Jock, from this brewery that would probably be considered uh, an 80 or a 90 shilling beer this one but they also write on this one that this is an 80 shilling as well so i'm not sure about the exact rules when it comes to the um the alcohol content but if it was a 4.4 percenter i would have guessed um if they just called it you know wee jock i would have probably guessed that it would be somewhere in the region of like a 50 or 60 shilling at that uh, that kind of abv but i think that covers everything that we really should say about uh, about the different scotch ales but uh, yeah it tells you a little bit about the beer on the back itself it says wee jock is an iconic session ale from scotland's original craft brewery smooth and malty with a toffee nose and spicy uh, aftertaste wee jock is a beer to enjoy at home or with your mates crack open the banter with a cheeky wee jock slancha so it says that the uh, malt base in this one is pale ale and crystal with a little bit of roasted barley so that should be nice and then the hops in this one are fugles first gold and magnum so we know these hops quite well fugles and first gold i believe are both english hops if memory serves me correctly and magnum is typically used as a, a bittering hop that can there's quite a few different varieties of magnum new zealand german and i think american as well but yeah fugles is a hop that i've never been that fond of to be honest with you although it's very good in imperial stouts actually fugles gives you that really kind of big sort of ashy character first gold has got quite a nice grassiness to it from what i remember and then magnum is you know quite a spicy bittering hop in my experience 
But um, yeah, certainly looks the part, this one. So without further ado, I think we can get this open and have a taste. The Wee Jock, 80 shilling, 4.4% ABV from Brought Nails in Bigger, my 30th birthday beer review. So yeah, quite nice to just go back and have something a little bit like this. I'll need to let my dad have a taste of this one as well after the video. Most of the beers I review, of course, when I'm back in Scotland, I'll share with my dad after the video. It means that I can do more tastings and you know not really feel that bad about it. It's great. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's yeah, that's about two thirds, seventy five percent of the beer into the glass, and we'll put the rest in a little bit later on. So yeah, anyway, that looks lovely. Um, right, so before the head disappears on this one then, you can see that it's poured with somewhere between a quarter and a one third finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn, um, maybe, yeah, I'd say it's a kind of fawn colour there, you can see it when the camera zooms in, still love this camera by the way, the picture quality is just unreal. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there. Overall, it looks pretty nice. I don't know how well you can see the colour in this one, but it's actually like a very, very dark sort of chestnutty uh, mahogany colour that you're getting out of this one. And the beer is actually crystal clear when you shine the light through it. It's a very, very nice looking beer, actually. So, um, yeah, the colour of this one, I think, is, um, is pretty damn nice. So uh, remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. When this has got pale ale and crystal malt in it and also a little bit of roast barley, I'm not surprised at the colour of this one. The roast barley, right enough, is probably going to be the one that gives you most of the colour, but there are different varieties of crystal that can give you, uh, that will give you different colours and things like that. You can get cara crystal and all of these kind of things. But um, yeah, certainly looks the part. The length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. And any adjuncts that you put in in barley aging you do will affect the uh, colour of the um, of the beer as well. But you don't really have to care about it in this in this particular case. There's none of that going on here. But yeah, in terms of what you'd expect from a Scotch ale, definitely not out with the realms of possibility, actually. So I think we can have a look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we go. So let's have a sniff. Yeah, um, how do we say? Aroma-wise, I think this beer is very, very nice. So on the, um, as you would say, on the malty side of things, or I mean, just generally speaking, this beer is exactly what you would expect from a more traditional Scottish brewed Scotch ale, actually. Um, and this one you can smell, because it's a little bit lower in alcohol, it is leaning a bit more towards the bready end of the spectrum than the, the old jock does. The old jock has got a lot more kind of brown sugar and stuff in it, but this one certainly isn't lacking in this department, I hasten to add. So yeah, quite a few interesting things going on with this particular beer, I have to say. Um, yeah, um, aroma-wise, I think this is um, this is pretty damn nice, actually. Um, on the, um, yeah, in terms of the, the kind of bready backbone and stuff like that, and the hoppy side, you know, it's got everything you want. It's got a little bit of juicy fruitiness. It's got a nice little bit of a kind of hoppy smoothness to it. And you've also got the breadiness and the brown sugar. So it gives you everything that you want from this style. So this is obviously a very true to style beer and you wouldn't expect anything less of Broughton. You know, they, they're the first Scottish microbrewery. They, they know how to brew Scotch ales. So yeah. This is pretty solid, so thumbs up to them for um, for this. Um, yeah. So let's just break it down a wee bit more. So the backbone is absolutely a nice toasty bread crust. That's forming the backbone of everything. There's one or two little woody aromas in there, little touch of nuttiness and things. And yeah, that just adds a little bit more kind of subtlety to the beer. On top of that, you've got a lovely little bit of a kind of brown bready character coming out of this one. So I really like how that um how that goes together in the beer. So yeah, aroma wise, I think this beer goes about its business very, very well. Um so I think yeah, aroma wise, I think this one, the multi side of things is um the multi side of this beer is just, you know, is really nice actually. So for me, 
the um, on top of that brown bread, that nice kind of smooth brown bread. You know, there's almost a little bit like a German rye bread. It's almost got a little bit of that sweetness to it. But on top of that, you get that nice kind of slightly. It's almost a little touch treacly. You can smell some of the caramelisation that's going on here. Um, but you get a little bit of that slightly treacly note to the beer. There's definitely a little bit of a kind of toasty brown sugary character underneath it. But yeah, big sweet caramel notes in the middle. A little bit of a kind of more treacly molasses sort of thing underneath and a nice toasty, but still quite bright brown sugary character. And there's also, um, there's also a wee bit of that kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing coming out, um, coming out of this one. So, um, yeah. Malty side of this beer. Uh, the malty side of this beer is uh, pretty nice. So um, yeah, I think that the the way that the brown sugar has come into this one, it's got quite a bit of diversity. A bit bit of biscuit, a bit of you know more toasty brown sugar, some more highly caramelised treacle molasses, and also a bit of a brighter caramel too. So there's a whole diversity of things going on in there, and then it's just got that nice smooth but still slightly grainy bready backbone coming out of it and as I say compared just from memory compared to the old jock this one is a little bit more bready whereas the old jock is a little bit more kind of oily and uh, and things like that so uh, a little bit more oily and sweet in a sense so the malt base of this one is very true to the style but definitely different from the old jock so just bear that in mind let's have a look at the hoppy side of the beer and see how we go with that so yeah on the uh, so on the hoppy side of things, um, for me, it's kind of what you'd expect. The hops in this one, the Magnum, First Gold and things like that, it has a little mix of a kind of German and English sort of thing. For me, English hops have always been a little bit more earthy and herbal, whereas the German ones have been a bit brighter and grassy in a sense. So you get a bit of both of that in there. At the back of the nose, there is absolutely, you know, there is absolutely a little bit of... Um, of that kind of earthy sort of thing going on and that will be from the fugles I would guess you can smell just a wee touch of that ashy sort of thing that it always gives you but definitely some nice herbal character in there a bit of bright floral aromaticity for sure yeah a nice little bit of a bright floral aromaticity in there and then you also have um you know you also have a lovely um you've got a lovely little bit of um I would say you've got a kind of brighter grassy sort of thing um, that's come out that comes out of this one too. So yeah, um, the floral aromaticity is quite bright and German in that sense. It's not kind of wetter like the English floral aromaticity would be. Then you've got a little bit of the bright grassiness in there as well that just has that wee bit of zestiness to it. But yeah, I do like that. On the fruity side of things, um, yeah, on the fruity side of the beer, I think this one. Um, fruity side of the beer for me has um it has a wee bit of um kind of dried fruity character to it but at the same time you do get that big kind of juicy plum sort of thing there's a little bit of a raisin in there and you've also got a wee bit of um you've also got a little bit of um blackberry black currant coming out of this one so yeah the way that that goes together i think is um is very very nice so it gets a big thumbs up from me in that regard as well so um yeah i do like how this beer i do like how it goes about its business from that perspective big kind of juicy oily fruits but a wee bit of that dried character underneath it for sure so yeah it's certainly a beer that's striking my interest at the moment and um, so as i always say take a bit of time to um to go over it to you know enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but i think it is about time that we try this one and see how we go so as always with my reviews we'll say slanger skull cheers and we'll dig in this one is the wee jock 4.4 percent abv from brought nails in bigger my 30th birthday beer review slanger cheers Yeah, it is pretty nice. And you know, as I was saying with the aroma, it is very like the old jock, but definitely more bready. That's it. Um, you don't quite have the same level of brown sugar in this one. But yeah, the flavour profile to the old jock. And I, had, I drank an old jock with my friends just maybe about a week ago, or something like that. The flavour profile of this one is pretty damn similar, actually. So yeah, I do like how that goes together.
It's another solid, solid beer from Brockneos. I mean, you wouldn't really expect anything less, would you? But, uh, yeah, there we go. So, um, where to start with this one then? Um, just do as we always do. So straight away across the, the middle of your palate then, you can feel that nice kind of grainy bread crusty character to the beer. Um, on top of that, you know, on top of that, you get a nice kind of brown bready uh, type vibe. But um, yeah, it's, yeah, you can feel the sort of roasted barley. This one is definitely forming the backbone. So it gives you that kind of toasty bread crusty vibe to the beer. But then on top of that, you've got the kind of smoother brown bready, wholemeal brown bready type thing coming out of this one. And I really like how that goes together for sure. So, um, on the, um, on top of that as well, I, don't, I think the other thing we can say is if we focus on the middle third of your palate just now, so as I said, a bit of a kind of toasty grainy bread crust, smooth brown bread on top of that, then toward the, um, you know, towards the kind of front half of that, um, yeah, toward the kind of, the, the front half of that middle third of your palate, you get one or two little woody and nutty characters in there, but on top of the brown bread, there's a good little bit of brown sugar in there. And it's quite similar to what we picked up in the uh, in the aroma of the beer. So you can feel it's like a circle sitting in the middle of your palate. So you can feel there's a sort of toasty base layer there. So I do like how that goes about its business. So yeah, nice little bit of toasty, uh, a little bit of toasty brown sugary sort of thing in there. On top of that, uh, on top of that, you have um, a wee bit of a more kind of you have a little bit of a more oily, um, slightly treacly molasses sort of thing. But then in the dead centre of your palate, you've got the straight up sweet kind of caramelly notes. So it, there's an interesting diversity of brown sugar in here, and that is quite similar to what we had in the aroma. Um, but I think the further you go into the aftertaste, the breadier this beer gets. And I do remember Old Jock just being a little bit brighter in the brown sugar and also just a little bit sweeter and heavier in a sense. But yeah, as you go out from the dead centre of your palate toward the um, the edge, uh, toward the edge of the palate, um, I think that uh, that side of things goes really well too. So... On the um, yeah, on the kind of um, I think if we go out from the edge of the palate, as I say, you get a little bit more of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of vibe to this beer, but that shows itself more in the aftertaste as well. The sort of sweetness you get just becomes that little bit more grainy and biscuity like. But yeah, you've got some lovely big oily uh, brown sugary characters coming out of this beer, so that gets a thumbs up. Uh, that definitely gets a big thumbs up from me. I like how that goes together for sure. But on the um, yeah, on the how would we say on on the the kind of back thirty part. I think there's a few other things going on, but I think we've said everything we need to about the middle third year palette in this beer. So let's move on to that back third year palette then. So the border region between middle and back third year palette, you get a little bit of a bready build up in there. So yeah, a little bit of bready build up, and um, you can feel a wee bit more kind of grainy and bread crusty than the base. The base of that back third of your palate is a little bit more kind of. Right, it's a little bit more. You, as I say, you do get that little bit of a kind of bread crusty backbone. Uh, on top of that, you get the. Um, pardon me. You certainly get a wee bit more kind of. Uh, that the brown bread and it's the brown bread is a little bit thicker and it does get a wee bit more grainy toward the back of your palate Now remember at the back of your palate the more grainy flavors are going to come out the grainy and bitter flavors Then further forward on the palate you're going to get the sweeter side of things So yeah, it makes sense the brown bread layer is a little bit thicker and a wee bit more grainy on top of that You start to get the yeasty side of the beer and this feels a, bit, a little bit more like a kind of doughy bready character There's a wee touch of a kind of almost slightly peppery spicy note in there maybe one or two little kind of crackery, Jacob's Cream crackery elements to it. But uh, yeah, the yeasty character of the beer certainly comes out on that back third of your palate and it gets a thumbs up from me. I do like how that goes together. But on the, uh, as I say, on the back third of your palate then, 
you um, on the back there, your palate, you see, you get a, you can feel that the flavour is a little bit taller, and as you come further forward, uh, as you move further forward from that, the flavour just condenses down a little bit, and as you move into the middle third of your palate, it just kind of the flavour just squashes down um, a wee bit more, and it's a bit more condensed. So yeah, I do like how how that goes together in this beer for sure. So a big thumbs up from me once again. But yeah, uh, I think that covers everything about the malty and yeasty side of the beer. So let's focus on the hoppy and fruity side of things then. So back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. As you move further forward, it develops a wee touch of a herbal character. And you can feel a little bit of that slightly ashy thing from the fugos coming through in this one. You definitely get a wee bit of that. But as you push further forward towards the kind of front corners of the palate then, um, you get that little bit of floral, floral aromaticity. So um, yeah. I think that is uh, that is very, very nice. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it, uh, the, the, the floral, the green side of this beer is pretty nice. And round the front curve of the palette, you've got a little bit of a kind of wetter, grassy type vibe to this beer. So, yeah, that works um, pretty nicely, I have to say. So... On the, um, the same, I think the, the floral aromaticity as well does have a wee bit of wetness to it, but um, yeah, I think that does work. Uh, that does work pretty pretty well in this particular case. So again, it gets a big thumbs up from me on the green component. This is a really solid beer. I mean, I'm surprised of how much flavour this has for 4.4%. It really is well done. So yeah, um, I like this. Just. As I say, a slightly more bready version of, of Old Jock, to be honest with you. But let's focus on that front third of your palate then. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build-up in there. The base of that um, the base of that front third of your palate is a wee bit more um, kind of like brown bready. And the brown bready character is almost a little bit more like a German rye bread there. It has a little bit of that sweetness there. Then on top of that, you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just kind of roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, again, I like how this goes together. Um, so yeah, um, the fruity side of the beer then, I think toward the back of that front third of your palate, you do get a little bit of an almost cakey type vibe out of this one. It has a wee bit of that kind of, um, sort of fruit cakey type vibe there just building up but then on the very back of that front third of your palate there's a wee bit of a kind of there's a wee bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness there but then as you move down from that you get a little bit more of a kind of datey pruney sort of thing so you've got this nice dried kind of datey pruney sort of thing uh, as you move further forward on the palate so yeah a little bit of a datey pruney kind of vibe there's a wee bit of um as we say, uh, the further forward you go, you do get a little bit of an almost kind of sultana, a dried sultana sort of thing. But then as you reach the kind of front half of that front third of your palate, it's a little bit more kind of, um, I would say, it's a little bit more kind of black currenty and then an oily, f and then you get a wee bit of that kind of figgy character coming forward, but then you get a more juicy black currant underneath and an oily black berry just sitting on top of that. So yeah, I really like how this beer goes about its business from that particular perspective. So again, a big thumbs up for me in terms of uh, in terms of flavour. This one, the fruity side of it is pretty much spot on. So like I say, flavour wise, it is just like a slightly lighter and more bready version of Old Jock. So yeah, good stuff once again from Broughton. But yeah, to round off this review then with a look at the mouthfeel. Um, so, um, this beer, it definitely has a little bit of a, uh, it has, it's kind of at the bottom end of mid-bodied for me. The carbonation is quite smooth and the beer does have a degree of slickness, which you want from a more brown sugary oriented beer like this. So it definitely gives you that, which I very much like. Um, and it has that kind of typical Scottish cleanliness to it. I always talk about these beers being very clean in the mouth feel. And again, this one really shows that off quite nicely. So a lovely kind of clean, slick uh, mouthfeel with this beer. But um, yeah, it works. It absolutely works. So on the um, 
the IBU side of things, I would say this one is about 15. Yeah, it's about, it is about kind of 15 or um, 20, maybe 20 IBU, something like that. I don't find this beer overly bitter at all, although in fairness, you have got a bit of graininess in there. And the graininess, I believe, is um, is giving you, it is, you know, giving it a little bit more uh, of, um, is adding a little bit to the bitter effect of there. But yeah, you've got a nice kind of smooth bready character in there, a little bit of a kind of oily, um, a little bit of an oily brown, a little bit of an oily kind of brown sugary sort of thing in there as well, as we said. So good balance in this one between the kind of smooth bready side of things and the grainy side of the beer and also a bit of sweetness. And when it comes to the fruity side of the beer, a little bit of dried fruit, but a wee bit of a more kind of oily um, side of things as well. But uh, yeah, overall, I think this one is a very, very nice beer. So it gets a big thumbs up from me, actually. So um, yeah, I think this one from Brought Nails has been very, very nice to, to, to taste. So yeah, this is a quite a nice birthday beer. I always enjoy a Scotch Ale and this one has been very, very good. I love trying this style of beer from different countries as well. And we've had some really nice examples over the years. But uh, yeah, I think if you're wanting to try some Scottish brewed Scotch Ales, I would recommend uh, the, the Big Jock, or Old Jock, sorry, <laughs> this wee Jock. I would recommend the Old Jock for sure. Um, I would recommend the 160 shilling from Tracker House and I would also recommend the Old Parochial from Tempest Brewery. That's a Scottish brewed version of the more American uh, the more American take on the style, I guess we could say. So yeah, those are three Scotch Ales that you really need to try from Scotland if you get the chance. But yeah, I think we can leave it there. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Broughton Neils, and we will return to these guys at some point fairly soon. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and I'll see you guys on the next review. Slanja, Skull, cheers.